Kingdom Rush is a tower defense game that has you building all different types of towers to kill the monsters trying to invade your kingdom. You have bomb towers to nuke large groups of enemies, you have wizards to kill heavily armored enemies, you have barracks that train killing machines in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and then you have archers, which kind of just do grunt damage. So what if you removed all of the actually good towers from the game and instead try to beat it with just the archers? Can you still beat the game? Before we begin, if you're enjoying the video, then a sub to the channel will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. I started by opening a new save file and setting the difficulty to Veteran, the hardest game mode they have. Then I started the first level. You start with the base 4 towers without being able to upgrade them at all, which really just means that I had to spam archers and pray that I survived. During round 3, I unlocked the power to summon reinforcements. This is incredibly useful and the only reason this challenge is possible. Every so often, you can summon two soldiers to fight for you. They'll pick the first enemy they see that isn't already fighting someone else and start attacking it. The monster will then freeze in place and start fighting until they kill the soldier which allows your archer to have more time to kill it. The main strategy in this game is to set up a kill zone. You put some barracks down to freeze a bunch of enemies in one place and has super powerful support towers chucking nukes, arrows, and magical spells at them until everyone is dead. The reinforcements let us kind of replicate that, which is life saving. During round 4 we get introduced to orcs which have high armor and that means wizards are really good at killing them, hint hint wink wink. Even though there were only 3 of them, I nearly died because of how bad the archers are. Later in the level, I unlock the other power we have at our disposal. The Reign of Fire lets me call down powerful meteors to deal lots of damage to any enemies near it. This is great for clumps of enemies or just to a lot of damage to high health enemies. The rest of the level was pretty cut and dry and I managed to get 3 stars. Stars are used to buy permanent upgrades to your towers, reinforcements, and Reign of Fire. I decided to buy the first two upgrades for the archers which gives them more sell back and increases their range. After completing a level and after killing certain enemies, you get gems that can be spent in the gem shop where you can buy crazy items that can freeze enemies, give you more hearts, and even kill every monster on screen. These felt a little cheap and scummy so I'm just gonna go ahead and ban them. Level 2 is immediately a lot more difficult. You get access to level 2 towers and they want you to use every tower especially bombs. Most of the waves of enemies consisted of ridiculous numbers of goblins or wolves, which are so fast they have a chance to dodge arrows? What? Due to the massive amount of enemies, I was constantly getting overrun and building new random towers to try and kill the enemies that slipped past. I lost two lives but managed to beat the level and still get three stars. I was a little confused after that and found that 18 to 20 lives remaining means you get three stars, 6 to 17 lives remaining means you get two stars, and 1 to 5 means you get one star. Anyways, I got the ability to ignore a portion of an enemy's armor which is nice as armor is one of the only things I'm struggling with right now. I also got more attack range which is always nice. During level 3 I got overrun by wolves and lost 6 hearts in the beginning. But besides that, I didn't lose any more hearts even though I had to face shamans which can heal enemies near them and ogres that obliterate everything in their path. I only got 2 stars because of the wolves, but that's alright. After beating level 3, I unlocked the hero room in our first hero, Sir Gerald Lightseeker. Heroes are very powerful and can be brought into levels to fight for you. They gain XP as they fight and level up to become more powerful. They start each level at level 1 and can reach level 10. There are 4 heroes you can unlock and also 9 paid characters which I'm just going to go ahead and ban because they're a little overpowered. In level 4 you unlock level 3 towers which I mostly forgot about till the very end because this level was so stressful. You have 2 lanes that the monsters travel down and I was constantly getting overrun. Even with the hero to help I still managed to lose 4 lives. With the 2 stars I earned from that level I was able to buy the final archer upgrade which gives them a chance to crit and deal double damage whenever they hit an enemy. Now that we've upgraded the archers all the way we still have some use for the stars. We can still upgrade our reinforcements and rain of fire to make them a lot more powerful. Next up is level 5, the Silver Oak Forest. There are a couple of interesting things about this level. The first is this building over here. For $100 you can repair it and then pay for highly trained elves to fight for you. It's not technically a barrack but it's close enough so I decided not to use it. The other interesting part of this level is that you unlock one of the tier 4 archer upgrades in the middle of the round instead of at the beginning. Each tower in this game has two tier 4 upgrades that you can choose between, which both have two powers you can buy. 
The rangers have the ability Poison Arrows and Wrath of Forest. Poison Arrows deal damage over time, which is crucial in this challenge for defeating enemies with lots of health, while Wrath of the Forest grabs enemies around it in thorns, simultaneously freezing them in place and dealing damage to them. The Citadel was the first real roadblock in my path. During this level, you unlock the Arcane Wizard who does a ton of damage to high-armored enemies. To encourage you to use this tower, they throw a ton of high-armored enemies, and uh, that's really not good. I tried a couple of times to just spam rangers, but it just wasn't working. And then I remember the poison. I haven't used this upgrade much, as in normal playthroughs, I don't really use this tower to deal with high health enemies, instead opting for better towers. But now I don't have the option, and just tried to fully upgrade the poison vines to deal massive damage while slowing them down as much as possible. This worked out really well and let me fly through the level. At the very end, I faced the first mini boss in the game, the Juggernaut, who shoots balls out of his fists that explode into little metal creatures that you have to defeat. With all the money I was earning from defeating these little minions, I was able to constantly buy more towers and take the Juggernaut out. The very next level, I unlock the other tier 4 tower being the Musketeer. This tower deals massive amounts of damage and has a huge range, but doesn't fire very fast. The two abilities that it has are Sniper Shot, which gives it a chance to instantly kill an enemy or deal a lot of damage to a boss, and Shrapnel Shot, which gives a short range attack that blasts enemies with a ton of damage. After beating that level, I unlocked Malak Hammer Fury, who is amazing and who I'll be using for most of the rest of these levels. I also started upgrading my reinforcements with stars. When you fully upgrade these guys, they become full-on legionnaires that have a lot of health and damage and even have spears to throw for long-range damage, so I was trying to rush that as soon as possible. The next couple of levels were pretty easy with me just placing down an archer or two with vines to slow the enemies down while the snipers took care of them. The only interesting thing that happened was while I was playing Stormcloud Temple, this big guy caught past my defenses. I really didn't want him to break through as he would cost me 3 lives so I just started stalling him. It took 3 minutes to kill him, which honestly might have lost me lives in the process for not having a hero or reinforcements, but I think it was worth it. The next level that gave me a challenge was the Forsaken Valley. At this point, I have the reinforcements maxed out, but no upgrades on my reign of fire in case you're wondering. In this level, you have to deal with two sides at the same time. Since that's a lot of work and I usually end up with a hodgepodge defense at the end anyway, I decided to try and put all of my defense at the end and make a death trap. That plan did not work. So I tried again with a different strategy, and then I tried again, and again, but nothing was working. So I decided to change up my strategy a little. I decided that instead of upgrading my reinforcements all the way, I would save the stars and instead spend them on the meteors which made them very deadly, and something that could get me out of a tight situation instead of being essentially useless. My reinforcements were still decently strong, and since they mostly served as a distraction for the enemy while they got sniped to death, it's okay for them to not have spears. I also noticed the right side was getting through a lot more than the left. The right side was filled with high health and high armor enemies that were hard to defeat, so I spent more money on the right side and placed my reinforcements in here on the right side a lot more often than the left. With these few adjustments, I was able to barely scrape by with one star. I unlocked the final hero of my journey, Tenchi, who is basically Sensei Wu from Ninjago. He can summon meteors from the sky and turn into a big buff dude to absolutely wail on enemies. He's pretty great, and we certainly need him as we're now facing the final level. The Dark Tower has a lot of interesting quirks that makes it very annoying. Along with the strong enemies that are sent out from the tower, there's also a constant stream of skeletons coming from the graveyard that you have to fight, and troops that are summoned out of these symbols on the ground, one of which is directly in front of the exit. Also, as you get to the halfway point, you start putting laser cages around your towers, which makes them inactive for a little bit. You get a couple of seconds to mash them out, but he constantly tries to freeze more and more towers, which more so makes you choose which towers you need and which towers you can leave frozen, as there's no way you can mash them all out. My general strategy for this level was to get a couple of ranger towers with vines to freeze enemies in place, and then spam maxed out musketeers to clean up everything else. I thought I was going to lose it all during the last round when I had a massive horde running right at the exit, but Tenchi clutched up and I managed to survive until the boss fight. We're fighting the Dark Emperor himself, and the annoying thing about this fight is he's still freezing your towers and spawning enemies, so even when your towers can shoot, they're almost always firing at someone else. I eventually managed to lower his health bar to zero at the very end of the trap when he activates phase two and turns into a demon god. I thought I was screwed for sure, but he actually doesn't have that much health and stops spawning enemies to distract me. 
So I managed to defeat Viznan, save the kingdom, and finish the game with only the crappiest tower at my disposal. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to like and subscribe, and have a great day.